This is Metal Mike, and on this episode of the 80s Glam Metalcast, we talk with vocalist Robert Fleischman. Robert has sang for Journey, and he sang for a big one for us 80s metal geeks, Vinnie Vincent Invasion. We talk in depth about his time working with Vinnie Vincent. We also get into other projects he's worked on, and we hear what he's up to today. Check it out. Robert, welcome to the 80s Glam Metalcast. How you doing tonight? I'm doing fine, thank you. That's great. Thanks man. for um, your interest in my my life, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So during this pandemic, you know, a lot of people have gotten creative. They're working on new music. I also know you're a painter. What have you been up to? Well, I've kind of like walked away from music for a while and um, been painting. Uh, I've painted all my life and I've done music all my life. Um, it's either I'm painting or I'm doing music. So um, uh, I've done that since I was like 13 years old, pretty much. In the last couple of years, about a year and a half or so, I haven't really touched anything musically, but I just kind of pulled the trigger on the um, idea of doing another record. And what I'm thinking of doing is a electronic album with heavy guitars and me singing over them and uh, in song structure. So I just bought um, a Moog uh, synthesizer, the uh, Monarch and the Grandmother. And I bought some new studio speakers and uh, I bought a new drum machine and I just ordered all the stuff. So I'm just waiting for this stuff to come in and I'm going to set it up and then I'm going to start in a whole new genre of music wow. for myself. That sounds awesome. That that sounds, you know, adventurous, you know? <laughs> Definitely. You think you'll maybe have it out sometime next year, or are you just kind of just going to roll with it and see where it goes? I'm just going to roll with it and see where it goes. Usually, I always just like, I'll write five songs, and then I'll pick the best out of the five songs, and maybe I'll get like two, and then I'll write another five, and then I'll pick the best out of the five, and then I'll... You know, it's like building your string of pearls, in a sense. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Obviously, I'm from the 80s glam metal cast, so you probably know I'm going to ask about a Vinnie Vincent invasion. Does it surprise you that you get all these crazy 80s fans that want to talk about this album? No, I um, I think the album is sort of like a cult classic, you know, <laughs> like a monster movie. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it definitely is. So when you when you go back and you listen to it all these years later, what are some of the thoughts that go through your mind? Um, gee, I could sing high then. <laughs> <laughs> you could. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, that album is just so bombastic, you know. There's nothing like it. I mean, even to this day, it, you know, people still kind of celebrate the uh, anniversary of when the album came out. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like number 40 or 39 or something like that in um, uh, Rolling Stone magazine for like heavy metal albums yes yeah i think you're right yep and um so i mean it's just got its own anusha you know it just has its energy that um people just can't get enough of it's got a it's got some great energy to it you know it's just out there one song that i just can't get enough of is is no substitute i can't even understand how that wasn't a single yeah um i guess well, I wasn't there to to really uh, push it, mm -hmm. and they, I guess the record company was just pushed out uh, what Boys Are Gonna Rock, they did right. the video on that, and they went that angle, you know. You know, what's unbelievable, too, is that, um, you know, that Kiss passed on these songs. When he was in Kiss, they passed on uh, Boys Gonna Rock, they passed on Back, uh, you know, on the Streets, and those are killer tunes. Yeah, 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 Vinny's a great writer, you know, um... That's what attracted me towards, um, you know, working with him in the beginning was, you know, he, not only was he just a, a monster of a guitar player, but he could write a fucking song, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, uh, many people know that you also sang in Journey, and, and you played with somebody obviously like Neil, who was a very melodic player. What did you think of some of Vinny's solos, like when you heard him? Uh, I mean, Vinny was really shredding, and, and there wasn't a ton of melody there. What, what did you think of some of those solos? They, they just they fit the character of what was going on. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, if he would have been playing any other way, it would maybe not have worked, or it might have been, I don't know, good, but... 
I think the the energy level and the uh, just the bombasticness uh, was just uh, you know a big matching tie and handkerchief in a sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you know, it just yeah. all it just all worked, even though it was out of you know left field. It just it, you just threw it on the you know on the wall and it just stuck. You yeah. know. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, the, when you think about it in that respect, I mean, like you said, you, you're singing super high, uh, the playing super fast, the drum rolls are going crazy. So I guess, you know, it was making a statement for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I see it made a statement. <laughs> now, I got to ask you about this. One thing, obviously, that's very uh, also bombastic about Vinnie Vincent Invasion is the look of the guys in the band. And what always right. threw me off was the picture with you with those guys. So you've got these three guys that have giant hair, they got makeup, they got all these crazy clothes, and then here's you that looks just a little bit more normal than they do. What was up with that photo shoot? Well, the photo shoot, when I looked at it afterwards, it looked like I was uh, posing with three inflatable dolls, <laughs> three inflatable drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we were doing the session, and oh, the stylist for the um, for the photo shoot, for some reason, he just goes, "Oh, let's cut his hair to me." And oh. at that time. Uh, before he cut my uh, got my hair cut, I'm not kidding. It was all one length to my shoulders. Really? Wow. And, yeah, and it was. And then all of a sudden, I hear this zipping going on, and it was like you know they gave me the fucking poodle haircut, you know. <laughs> and uh, I was just, I was livid. I, I didn't know what to think. And um, and then right after that, um, Vinny's manager came up with to me with a contract that was the size of a phone book book and um and he has he said you got to sign this and i said i'm not signing anything with you believe me and uh he was just really adamant and i just said no and i found out the reason that he was just so flipped out that i wouldn't sign it is because he told chrysalis that he had me under management like he had everybody else mm. And so they got pissed off at him for lying, and I believe they got they got rid of him. So, yeah, it was um, kind of a screwy day. Wow! And then ultimately, with some kind of contract dispute, you're ultimately you're just out of the band, right? Yeah. Well, I was never in the band to, per se. I mean, really? I just I, I came in and just did the vocals. I mean, that was my intention, and Vinny just thought you know he could pretty much get his way with me in a sense, and. Um, and then they did the uh, Millie Vanilli thing, you know, where the guy, where <laughs> Slaughter's uh, singing to my voice. Exactly. What'd you think of Mark Slaughter uh, as a singer? At uh, well, for quite some years, I never really gave it much thought about him, and um, and I kind of was, you know, slagged him a bit here and there. Mm -hmm. But a couple of years ago, I heard an interview with him, and I listened to the whole interview, and I thought. This guy's a really nice guy. He's got a great work ethic. He plays guitar. He's still singing. You know, he 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 was offered a situation where um, you know he was going to replace me, and he was you know straight out of um, wherever he was from, from I guess Arizona or something like that, mm -hmm. um, or Texas or wherever he was from. You know, he had an opportunity. It was like, hey, can you ride a horse? And he goes, yeah. And so he got on the horse and he rode it. You know. <laughs> Right. And uh, good for him, you know. And uh, I, I've um, I've seen him three or four times. He's always been very nice to me. He's even said, "Hey, let's write a song together," and all that. And um, yeah, so um, we're good friends. I could say, you know, we're, we're friends, and uh, I have no ill feelings toward him or anything like that. Or mm -hmm. and uh, I understand exactly where. Um, he was and what he did and how it all happened for him and great that was great for him you know yeah put him on the fucking map yeah did you ever listen to all systems go or the second one no i never listened to it no i've never i've never heard it i never really heard any journey albums either no <laughs> that's funny so you know what, what you made me remember i think i might have heard the same interview or a similar interview that you that you're talking about with mark slaughter because i remember him you know, talking very highly of you in an interview. And he actually talks very highly of Vinnie Vincent. And what's crazy is that Vinnie Vincent 
for some reason, despises Mark, despises his voice. I even read something where Vi uh, Vinny wanted to have you replace all the vocals on, on the second album. So Vinny yeah, just did. despises uh, Mark Slaughter for some reason. Yeah, um, I believe he uh, believes that Mark Slaughter was forced on him from the record company okay. and from Dana Strum and, and all the powers that be that um, were involved in the project. And uh, I, I think Mark fit the bill better than I did. I mean, I, I'm just too straight for uh, for that, you know. <laughs> just um, <laughs> I, I grew I grew up listening to the Beatles and the Stones and the Kinks, and you know, I'm 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 still a you know an old mod at heart. So you know, <laughs> me me putting on spandex pants uh, it's just not my uh, forte. So obviously. Everybody thinks your vocal performance is killer on uh, the first Vinnie Vince album. So once you're out of that band, did I, I mean, did you get approached by other metal bands to, hey, why don't you sing for us or, or do uh, you know vocal work for us? Um, I think after that, I uh, became a staff writer for Almo Irving Publishing, which was part of A&M Records, and I was a staff writer for about three years there, okay. just writing songs and collecting a check every month. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I didn't have to. I mean, you know, it's like I just just was tired of being in the circus. Yeah. You know, just the whole music industry. And at that time, music industry was going through a lot of different changes. And uh, and it's crashed and <laughs> we got what it is now. Oh, yeah, which is basically non-existent, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So a lot of people might not know this, but I'm sure some some of the, the maniacs out there do, but there was a third Vinnie Vince album in the works. Uh, I think it was going to be called Guitars from Hell. Most of it's on YouTube. How did the doors open back for you guys to work together? Oh, he, um, he confronted me again and, uh, you know, just... <laughs> Kind of, I hate to use the word beg, begged me, but um, sort of that, you know, try to coax me into uh, doing some more stuff with him. And, and at the time, there wasn't anything going on that, at that time. And I just thought, oh, let's give it a swing, you know. Yeah. So, but every time I work with him and even on the, on the Invasion album, it's always, you know, I do all these uh, different takes. And then they, he gets a hold of them and starts splicing them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that really bothered me because, uh, it, to me, I can hear if it's, it's not cohesive to me. Oh, yeah. So I, I can, I hear all the different little things, nuances and, and nobody else knows, you know, nobody even <laughs> would even think of it, but I, I, I um, obviously I'm aware of it all. So I so I sort of, when I listen to it I try to let go. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're not you, you've lost control, right? Vinny has control. Yeah, yeah. So what happened with that whole thing? I mean, I've read stories that the label went bankrupt or did Vinny just self-destruct again? What what happened? Well, we were doing the record and he started getting excited about it. I think we had just done um Rocks on Fire or mm -hmm. something like that. Yep, Rocks on Fire, yep. Yeah, we had just got through doing that, and he was all excited about that song, and he just thought, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to some other record companies." So he started talking to other record companies, and um, the record company would c called up. Uh, I guess what label was he on? Metal Blade or what? Uh, Enigma, I think. Oh yeah, Enigma, yeah. So these, uh, you know, executives that that uh, he had pr approached called up Enigma. You know, mm -hmm. and ask him what's going on with Vinny and his contract and everything because he's over here saying he wants to make a deal with us. So it, it all it, it got to be obviously it just fell apart, and um, you know they found it to be. I mean, I, I I'm going to look at this, this is companies the guys that are paying for you to do this record, and you're going to go out and and go around around them and try to get another record deal. He's <laughs> like, you're insane. That's crazy. That's an insane move. You don't do that. Obviously, it didn't work. No, and I think he just got, I think the whole, well, obviously, the whole thing, thing got shelved, I think. And then he just ran off with the rough mixes and stuff and tried to put those out. And I think those were the mixes, I think, that were going to go on that cassette box that he was, you know, 
pushing at the time and, and didn't deliver on. Yeah. Yeah. So in 18, um, he resurfaced and, and I honestly, I never thought he would, I was ever going to resurface, but he, but he did. Um, I actually saw an interview. I want to say it was just the other night you, it was, you were saying it was kind of emotional to see him after all those years. I mean, was, was it crazy to, to see him at that point? Yeah. It was like seeing your dead brother. Right. Sitting next to you. It was just strange. And it was, uh, in Atlanta, and um, he was up there on stage, and he was, you know, talking, and he picked up a guitar, and for about a half an hour, he just went and just so thick in there. It was just him just telling a sad tale of woe and just floating down the river of misery, and and it was just everybody. I, I just it just was getting down and darker, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then he picked up the guitar and he sang a song and then um, he was fumbling around to do another song and he was fumbling around with um, Back on the Streets. Yeah. And so um, he was fumbling around with that and I thought, oh, I'm going to go up. And uh, I was at the back of the hall pretty much. And so I walked up to get closer to watch him do it. And the people that were involved with him were the, on the side of the stage and they saw me and they they uh, told me to come here, you know, waving me in. So I go there, and they're, they'd say, you got to go up there. And I said, no, I'm not going up there. I said, this is his day. You know, let him have his day. Yep. I'm not going up there. And um, they're going, no, you got to go up there. And then all of a sudden, uh, I got two people grabbing my elbows and, like, pushed me up on the stage. And next thing you know, I'm up on the stage, you know, just standing there. And um, then I, and he didn't see me and uh, he was just sitting down in a chair and I just sat down next to him and he just looked at me with like the biggest surprise and he was really happy. I was happy and it was emotional and um, it was, um, you know, a little uh, slice of history there. Yeah. And that was actually the very, that's the only time he and I had ever played in public in a sense. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, it, he just wanted me to do that thing in Nashville, I think, and all that. And, and I kind of agreed to it. And, um, but as usual and as always, um, Vinny's management always seems to be just, just bad news. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, the, and the unfortunate thing about Vinny is, you know, Vinny picks these people to work for him, and he sort of just hands them the wheel, you know, of life, his life, and they grab it, and they usually, they usually just crash the car, and then they pop out of it, and then Vinny's left with the the the, the wreckage, and his reputation being, you know, uh, smeared all over public, making him look like, a, you know, a jerk, mm -hmm. and um, a, a lot of that is not him and, a, and most of it is just just people who just take advantage of him thinking that they're gonna you know they're gonna lift themselves out of their own situation and Vinny's gonna save them but they can't even save themselves let alone save Vinny so you know it, it ends up being a disaster it's too bad because when you think about it the guy's talented obviously b being a kiss member having that feather in your cap is you know what I mean is priceless I mean this guy could have uh, you know a new album a book I mean he could do anything but it just seems like nothing ever goes anywhere. I, I know, and it's sad, but, um, you know, it's <laughs> I can't do anything about it, you yeah. know. So in your mind, are you, so he calls you tomorrow, hey, I got a record deal, I want you to sing on it. Are you just, are you, do you have to stay away based on, you know, past experiences or what? Um, <laughs> well, I, I, I really don't know what to say on that situation. You know, it, it was, it, it would have to be so many dots that would have to be, you know, connected. And um, and even if they were connected, who knows how long they would stay connected. <laughs> right, right. Totally understand. Understand. But well, that, I, I'm yeah, thinking but... about maybe asking him to come and play a couple of, um, do some guitar work on my new, I, on my new um, idea of um, electronic music and uh, heavy guitar. Yeah, that that you know what his kind of style would probably just sound perfect on something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting for my equipment to come, and I'm fixing up my room and 
getting everything out and ready to um, set up and start uh, going cuckoo. Nice. Well, let's talk about some of your solo stuff. Um, you know, one album that you've got out there that's a little bit more like on the melodic rock side was World in Your Eyes. Uh, I thought that was a great album. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Produced by Kelly Hansen, right? Uh, yes, somewhat, yeah. Yeah. What was he like to work with? Um, he was, uh, he was, he was a nice guy, you know, um, that, uh, that album was just, um, a mess. Was it? Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't have a very good, um, word for Frontiers Records to mm, say. Mm-hmm, sure. And, um, he, you know, the guy, uh, Serafino called me up and at like, I don't know, like two o'clock in the morning. I guess he's he lives in he lives in um, what Sicily or something like that. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you know, quite a time difference. So anyway, he calls me and I'm talking to him like at two thirty in the morning, and he's going, "I want you to make a record for me," you know. <laughs> so um, you know, this guy just goes around and he I, I, he's like an archaeologist to me. I mean, he goes around and finds dinosaur bands and he digs them up and. <laughs> Says, hey, you know, it's time. I'll give you twenty thousand dollars to make a record, and you know, and then the, and then the guy who got the phone call calls up the rest of the band, you know, and they're all excited that they got a, you know, somebody that's interested in them, so they can put on their spandex pants again, and you know, drive their beater to the fucking studio and try to beg for uh, studio time and on on twenty thousand uh, dollar budget. And, um, and then, uh, this guy, and then, uh, you know, there's the recording and, and then, uh, the studio's going, well, uh, where's the rest of our money? And they're going, well, uh, it's supposed to come, you know, and then, and then they're trying to get a hold of, uh, you know, Sicily to get the money and all that. And the record and the recording studios looking at you more like, uh, you know, you're bullshitting us and all this crap and, you know, it's, it starts getting thick, and sure. um, it, it's no fun. And then finally, he he coughs up the money. You know, when it's like the Titanic is, you know, <laughs> going down for the second time. And um, you know, it's and it's just a big, it's just a big, um, big hassle to work with that guy. And then once he gets your album, he gets all those albums. He makes, he 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 makes publishing deals in all these different countries with the same record so he'll go to spain and get like you know 15 grand out of there go to germany get another 10 grand he'll go to italy give me a, you know another five grand or whatever and he makes all this money through all these different countries and then you still have to pay the 20 grand on on your record that you sell and that's if you sell right wow so it, it's it's like a it's a big it's a it's a like a Ponzi scheme. Wow, well, but not see that's that's news to me. I have no idea how frontiers work. I definitely understood the digging up the dinosaurs, but but I didn't know about the whole money thing. So that that's interesting. Yeah, well, that's what he does, and I and I couldn't believe it when Journey got uh, signed up with them too. And, th- and that guy has such a hard on for anything that sounds like Journey. Right, right, right. I would assume they would probably get a little better deal than the average band, though, don't you think? Oh, they they, they did get a better deal. I mean, the guy, you know, the, it's like the guy had a, the, the the biggest hard on for, uh, you know, Jane Mansfield or something like that, and all of a sudden he gets Jane Mansfield, you know. Mm-hmm. Of course he's going to, you know, break open the big bucks. Yeah, for sure. How about The Sky? That I was jamming on that the other night. That That's pretty good stuff, too. It's like... Uh, Beatles E but more modern. Yeah, that's uh that's me. That's um I really love the Sky albums. Um I uh, the first album is very uh garage like. Mm-hmm. Uh very raw. Um not much production. Uh and then the second album um Majestic is uh much more produced. And then um I kind of left that cuz my um my wife got cancer. And so um, we, I moved away from Richmond, Virginia, and um, her her relatives and her mom live in uh, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. So um, we moved up here to Wisconsin, and um, and uh, she uh, she passed away um, 
um, in March 17th on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, very and, sad. And, um, yeah, me too. And so, you know, my, my life has just been thrown off the cliff. And uh, so I'm kind of going through all that. Yeah, so I, I moved here and um, I, uh, I started painting and I got myself a big uh, uh, industrial space. Like I got about 2,800 square feet. And I go there and I, I paint. And um, before the pandemic and all this crap, um, you know, I was selling um, paintings and, uh, you know, setting up uh, art shows and, you know, like a lot of friends like Chip, you know, Chip's enough. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's ready to go on the road and the pandemic said no. So, you know, same boat. So hopefully this whole stupid thing will pass and um, people will um, get the, get back to normal. What you did mention, Chip. Do you guys ever talk about collaborating? Because it seems like you've got a similar, uh, you know, musical uh, influences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. Yeah, he has a uh, he has his own recording studio at his house in uh, on Blue Island. It's called in, in Illinois, and we've talked about it. Uh, we see each other quite a lot. We have um, mutual friends, and we see each other like every other month or three times a month or so. And, um, he, he's, uh, when I f first met him a few, quite a few years ago, maybe about five or six years ago, you know, he was starting this whole thing with his band and putting it together. And, and I've watched him just put his whole life into it. And he's done really well. And I'm just so proud of him that, you know, it, the success that he's had and I've seen his band play quite a few times I've gone on stage and sang Fly High Michelle with him nice. and a couple, quite a few times with uh, Kip Winger also on stage mm -hmm. and you know so whenever he plays in Chicago or in uh, Wisconsin I'm, I'm always there yeah so we're, we're really great friends and yes we do have a lot of musical uh, threads uh, that tie us together and in um uh, that it were very similar. Yeah, he's a great dude. He's he's funny, and he's always been. Oh. Good. Yeah, he's always been good to me. So he's he's a great guy. <laughs> oh, he's he's the best. I mean, he he knows how to do a great interview. I'll tell you, he's he's got it down. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had me laughing. He had me dying. He told. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> we, we 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 get hysterical. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, Robert, hey, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for talking about some of that Vinnie Vincent invasion stuff. Uh, anything you want to say in closing? Wow. Um, just um, you know, I hope everybody has a great New Year and has great holidays, and, um, and everybody has uh, finds a bit of God and uh, and uh, humbleness in themselves and um, passes it on and to make a better world for us because right now we really need that, and I think it's time to stand up right now instead of um, playing sheeple because yeah. there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things out there trying to uh, corral us and. I don't, I want my freedom. I don't want to be corralled. It's just, um, the climate these days is just, uh, straight out of, a uh, Orwellian nightmare. It's like George, George Orwell. Everybody's got to be really strong and be aware of what's going on around you and not to get caught up in the, uh, <laughs> caught up in the octopus's arms, you know? Yeah, for sure. Really appreciate it. And, um, uh, pleasure to talk to you and um, all the best to you and you and your family and have a great new year. Yeah, same to you, Robert. And when you have that new music, send it over. I'll, I'll put it on my site. All right. Thank you so much, Michael. Take care now. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, well, that was a great chat with Robert. And hey, speaking of Vinnie Vincent, the next video on the 80s Glam Metal channel is going to be... 80s glam metal beatdown, Ace Freely versus Vinny Vincent in a WWE style animated wrestling match. Who is going to be crowned the ultimate Kiss guitarist? You'll just have to check in and see. And if you're a Kiss nut like me, I really hope you check out my previous video, which was Kiss Return of the Phantom. I geek out hardcore and I explain my concept idea for a Kiss Meets the Phantom sequel. So go check that out, and let me tell you, boys gonna rock on!